welcoming the one and all present here. Our talk for today is with the one and only Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai, author of the best-selling book Chanakya Niti, Corporate Chanakya, and countless other books which have shaped the field of management for aspiring students. He is currently deputy director at the University of Mumbai of Leadership Science. Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai has researched and discovered the relics which are forgotten in this modern era. We all might know Chanakya and his intelligence from ancient folks. Still, Sir was the one who simplified those teachings for us and applied the teaching of Chanakya in this modern era. Sir, you can now have your seminar first followed by our question and answers. Thank you, Ria, for the wonderful introduction. My uh, pranams, namaskars, good evening to each one of you present over here. I'm so glad to be part of this Bharat series. And you know, I'm lucky to be part of the four prominent personalities. So I'm not that prominent, I know. But Chanakya has made me prominent. And yes, in the introduction, as rightly spoken, my job has been to simplify Chanakya. Let me start with a story, my own journey. When I started studying Indian scriptures, and especially Kautilya's Artha Shastra of Chanakya, I found it very difficult because it was written in a Sanskrit, which was not very easy for us. And in our generation, it was like very elitist to think about Sanskrit as a language, scholarly language. And believe me, I'm a person who is very determined. So I decided, no, I will crack the code. I spent years together trying to study and understand. I did my MA in Sanskrit. I studied by going to a Gurukul. And then I realized so much wisdom of our country is there in our scriptures, the ancient Indian wisdom. But the thing is that we require two things. There were two challenges. Number one, we cannot glorify our past. So you have to study the past and make it simple. So the first challenge is simplifying ancient wisdom. And the second challenge was to make it relevant. So, you know, just by saying that, you know, we were the country which was the richest part of the world. Sone ki chediya is not enough. We need to make it relevant today. If the youth of 2022 is not able to benefit from the past wisdom, it's only glorification of the past. And therefore, I worked on these two challenges. I wrote a lot of books, traveled to so many places and my only mission in life was to simplify and bring back ancient Indian wisdom in a modern day context. So with that, I would like to wish you all of you a happy Independence Day in advance. And this year is a special year because it is 75 years. Please do celebrate in your own way, be it putting a flag outside your rooms, your houses or pinning a small flag on your t-shirt or coat. Okay. Many people ask me, do you think uh, you know patriotism has to be shown? My answer is very simple. Yes, yes, and only yes. You know, if you have to use Hindi over here, if you love somebody, you If you love somebody, you have to express it. I know love is silent. You don't have to express it every time. But there are times when you have to express it. So I think it's a great day for all of us. So let me also tell you that it doesn't matter which ideology you follow, which party you follow, whether you like Narendra Modi or no, that's your personal choice. But let me tell you this very clearly that you should love your country and you should not have a choice. And you know, I always talk about three things about India. One is the country, one is the culture, and one, third is the civilization. Okay? So three C's connected to Chanakya. <laughs> Chanakya is also starting with C. Okay? So as a country, uh, you know, we are talking about 75 years. But it's only 1947 onwards we have this format of a country. Before that, we were more than 550 princely states. Interesting, the China that we talk about was only formed in 1949. So if you uh, think about it as a country, as this governance system, it's very young, 75 years old. But if you look at the civilization that we have, it's much more older, more than five to 10,000 years old. So as a civilization, we have so much wisdom that we need to bring back into our generation. So with that, I would like to uh, talk about my topic for the day, which is the relevance of ancient knowledge in modern corporate ladder. Okay, first of all, the corporate that we have, unfortunately, is not Indian. You know, one of my philosophy teachers used to tell very nicely, the Britishers left us and we accepted the Americans. The Britishers left us and the, we accept the Americans. They never came. They are very good. I love America a lot because you know it's a country formed by a lot of hard work. 
a lot of revolutions and i do teach in some of the universities in us also so there i go and teach indian wisdom i won't blame them but somewhere we are not even looked at our own history and culture so let me start by saying this corporate culture that we have in our country is actually the american version which is indianized we are actually ruling the american companies be it the twitter or be it the microsoft or the google all of you know that but unfortunately we are not running the indian methods or the indian thought process so how would the ancient wisdom of india come to become relevant in today's modern day corporate world i don't want to bore you with a lecture i want to give you only three takeaways as i told you i believe in keeping things simple so what is the biggest demand of the modern corporate world of course you can read my book corporate chanakya we are completed 10 years and you will be surprised this still on amazon best seller list that shows it is relevant so please do grab a copy it's available it's not very highly priced also but i have seen how we can make chanakya relevant in our corporate world corporate chanakya and of course other books but i am not here to talk about the books i'm talking about the three points the first point every company requires is a good leader yes because our country has always been a country of leaders the mahabharata if you study it's not the war between common men it is between leaders the pandavas and the kauravas ramayana is a story of leaders in fact all our philosophies are about great leaders be it buddha he was a leader he was a king be it mahavira so they were born in you know leaders families and if you look at the philosophy of the sikh gurus they were all leaders and coming down if you look at mahatma gandhi lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak sardar vallabhai patel all of them are leaders so what the corporate uh, company should requires is good leaders not only corporates but also corporatives in fact the one of the most successful corporatives of the world is actually an indian corporative called amul i hope all of you remember it because many things we don't uh, take it very easily in our culture and amul is a case study by itself as all of you know it was started by the leadership of burgis kurian the milkman of india who created the white revolution when we got freedom in 1947 we actually were a war torn country we did not have food to eat we did not have milk to drink and today we are the world's largest producer of milk so much milk that we are actually creating ice creams and chocolates and everybody is becoming obese but let us let me tell you whatever be it it's only because of the leaders so from the ancient wisdom we actually can learn lot of leadership lessons and here is one thing i like to tell you beyond chanakya please study mahabharat so a lot of people have this misconception that mahabharata will create wars within families no in fact it will avoid wars and conflicts so don't look at only story it's also about debate and discussions so and in mahabharata if you want to study leadership there is a section called as raj dharma parva raj dharma what is the duty of a leader if you are not a good leader you cannot be a good entrepreneur you cannot be a good leader in any field so leadership has been explained by bhishma acharya to yudhishthir in a very detailed manner so the first thing is that ancient indian knowledge has got lot of leadership lessons so if you want to work anywhere don't work as an employee work like a leader if you want to start your own company think like a leader so the first lesson is leader i will only give you one tip about leadership yatha raja tatha praja as the leader so the organization and i'll give a modern day corporate example you know some of you must have heard about and i would say most of you must have heard about a company called as asian paints and you know there was a bad uh, time the pandemic when all the companies were going through challenges economic challenges you know what the managing director the indian did he told that this time instead of laying down people lot of companies uh, laid down their people lot of people lost their jobs he actually said that i am going to increase the salaries now think about it today we are talking about job losses but indian companies don't believe in taking away people who are already working with them another example actually is tcs among the finest companies of india globally the largest it company 
in the pandemic they recruited 50000 people so what is that it is not the economic situation today we talk about recession and inflation across the world a lot of people are worried when they look at the whatsapp mujhe job milega ki nahi milega don't worry about it go and work with an indian company or start your own company believe me it is not tough times it is how the leader manages the tough time so in the ancient wisdom we got so many lessons on leadership i want to give you two more lessons but before that i'm going to actually show you a video i'm going to request riya to play this video it's from the serial chanakya by dr chandrabakash divedi it's a very beautiful discussion and you can see a student and teacher relationship in this video since most of your students you will enjoy this video also so over to you riya Thank you so much for playing the video. This, as I told you, this is from a serial called as Chanakya by Dr. Chandra Prakash Devi. Fortunately, uh, in the copyright era also, this is freely available on YouTube. Forty-seven episodes. You can watch it free of cost. Please do a binge watching. If you have anything else to watch, this is a better option. Okay. But coming back to the video, what is the lesson? So in our Indian culture, leaders were trained to be philosophers. Okay, first thing I told you about ancient wisdom in the corporate world is about leadership. But what kind of leaders? It is not dictators or tyrants that we want to create. We want to create those people who are servant leaders. Praja ke sukh mein raja ka sukh hai. Today we have a statement called as you know uh, what is it? Uh, customer is the king, but the king has to love his employees first. so you know a lot of people only look at revenue and when paisa doesn't come money doesn't come they tell you employees to go sorry this is not the way indian culture is it's about philosophy so you believe in your people your team in your values that is very important so leadership is a very different ball game and in india there is lot of rich culture about leadership i tell you i, I remember i was in us i was in a university and there i came to know about a book and i would recommend all of you to read that book it's called employees first customers next so usually we say always customers first but there's a book by vinith nayar you can google it vinith nayar he spoke about a concept and very popular in us because us told us customer first but we are telling the us employees first what is the whole idea is that you know you may get customers but if your employees are not there you'll not be able to serve your customers also so the whole idea is that you know you have to understand what's your values so many time when you look at a company's website it all starts with vision and mission right so as leaders you should have a clear vision and indian wisdom will give you a lot of high profile vision not so much small you know making money is not the vision maybe that's a goal maybe that's a temporary requirement i know i was working with tcs when i say working not as an employee as a strategist So they will don't worry about finance. हम लोग पैसा बहुत अच्छी कर लेंगे. They will become the world's number one company. They are not worried about it. Out of eight lakh Tata employees, six lakh are actually TCS, and they are having the biggest problem in the world. You know what is it? Talent. Even now they are hiring one lakh people. Okay, and remember Tata is sponsoring IPL. So look at it is going to be one of the most respected companies of the world. but they are respected because of their values so remember it's very important that you become a philosopher king so the ancient in wisdom talks about a concept of a good leader an ideal leader as raja rishi remember this word raja rishi it is not just raja positional leader what's your values are you a thinker are you somebody who believes in yourself so the second point that i want to tell you the first one is indian wisdom can give you good leaders in the corporate world but second is it will also give you valuable leaders not just valuation leaders okay because wall street can give you a lot of valuation but you know as they say you know uh, sometimes uh, it becomes greed not just need be ambitious but don't become greedy it all becomes on values so in this particular video you saw there were philosophical discussions so i hope when you become leaders in the corporate world you have philosophical discussions in your boardroom not just number and data mining today is a world of data right 
don't worry about data i am worried about your philosophy over here before you mind the data so yes data will be there indians are anyway good in numbers because we give the world zero without which calculation is not possible isn't it and i always tell not just zero but 1 to 0 and infinity and beyond in fact there is a movie about you know the man who knew infinity ramanuja i hope all of you have seen it that is also available on youtube you can download it or see it so we are very good in numbers so don't worry so all the big companies in the world are number driven but we as indian should be value driven for numbers we are not denying numbers in fact we are the one who believed in numbers we are the one who specialized in maths sankhya in fact there is a philosophy in india called as sankhya philosophy you can study that so i would just want to tell you that second point i want to give you for the corporate world is that you know be value driven not just number driven and indian history will show you the way and the third point last point for the day is that you saw in the video have the quality of abhayam be fearless Okay, it's very important. You saw two students. One student actually got frightened when the king started shouting at him. But the second student, who is a student of Chandakya from Takshashila, he got up and he on the face told the king that you know you are not the king. You are actually just a state employee. Now this is something I want you to learn in life. You know, suppose your boss is wrong and he is doing something which is unethical. Stand up. because if you are fearless only then you will succeed in life my guru used to tell me always if you don't stand for something you will fall for everything if you don't stand up for something you will fall for everything so be very clear that you should be fearless and fearlessness is a very important quality be fearless but don't be arrogant a lot of people have that you know over confidence we are not talking about over confidence we are talking about a quality of being fearless in in front of uh, people who are not uh, you know in the right senses or right values in fact mahatma gandhi became father of the nation because of this one quality he could stand up sardar vallabhai patel had this quality of standing up so be fearless wherever you are i just want to stop here with a small example a real life example i know of an hr director of a big company a okay, very big company so this hr director actually was told by his chairman saying that you know there is a paper i am sending you please sign it he is a highly educated guy like all of you okay and he read the whole thing and he realized one thing this chairman is actually uh, starting an office internationally for some economic fraud you know paisa ghumata hai na and the chairman was smart he said you sign it So if tomorrow something happens, you will go to jail. So he read the whole thing, and he found out there is something grey area about it. It's not white and black. And the chairman called him and said, "You know, have you signed the paper?" He said, "Sir, I want to come and meet you." He said, "Okay, come down. Very important for me. You sign it today only, and I want to send you to Singapore. Okay, and you will actually handle the Singapore office or wherever it was. It was a multinational posting he was getting. So sign it and go abroad with your family." and he said no sir i will not sign it and why what happens i feel it's a wrong thing you are getting into you know it's a big fraud that you are getting into and i don't want to be part of this in fact chanakya said the crime doers and the crime planners and the crime supporters all are responsible so i will not support this you know you may send me abroad with lot of money with my family and all but the thing is that this is not good for the nation imagine and the chairman said you know you better sign it that's your job and then he said dinner and say i will not go to side i'm not going to sign it i'm not going to side you know what the chairman said do you have another job in hand i said i don't have a job so do one thing go down to your office and start looking out for a job from today evening our relationship is over and in spite of all this what we call dhamki you know that you will lose your job and the favor of saying that you will go out with your family he said no and that day he left the office fortunately his, his work was so good that next day he got a better job in a better company why am i telling all this thing there will be challenges that you will face when you come to the corporate world you may face lot of ethical and unethical problems but that time the ancient indian wisdom will come and help you 
Okay, friends, with that, I want to summarize the three points. As I told you, it's not a lecture. Maybe I can come back again for a full print lecture, a full module on Chanakya and engineering and wisdom. But today, I want to summarize these three points as take away relevance of ancient knowledge in modern corporate ladder. The first one, think like a leader. We got a lot of wisdom on leadership in our country. Second point is be valuable to the company with your values. Okay, be ethical in your dealings. And the third one, be fearless, abhayam. If you practice these three simple words, you will become successful wherever you go. All the best and thank you. Over to you for questions. Thank you, sir, for the remarkable speech. I'm sure that your words and your remarks have given new insights and they have triggered the ideas that I believe will benefit our audience in numerous ways. So without any further ado, I will ask questions. Uh, okay. So, sir, as you have mentioned, the philosophies of our ancient kind include leaders and not common men. Sir, how can we ensure as common men today that the leaders and decision makers of today can inculcate the principles of ancient wisdom. So there is, there is one simple formula. Please study the ancient Indian scriptures. As I told you, you know, unfortunately, we only glorify our past. We don't study our past. Now, fortunately, there are a lot of books available, there are a lot of videos available, there are a lot of podcasts available now. And you know, now our history is coming back. I would say that you know. Be critical, but don't be cynical. There are a lot of writers now. In fact, I, write, I feel the best writers about India are actually sitting abroad. And please note it down. There is a new branch of knowledge, new system and science of knowledge called as Indology. I don't know how many of you heard about it. You can Google it. Indology is the study of ancient Indian wisdom or about India. It's Indic studies. So like Ayurveda, Yoga, Artha Shastra, Rama and Mahabharat, all these things come under Indology. So all leaders, I request, please study Indian scripture. Second important thing, don't just study because you may become a scholar with a lot of bookish knowledge. Okay. Please practice these values in your own personal life. You know, otherwise you'll become a pandit without application. That's not the way. And the best way to practice is to start res respecting your elders at home. Your dadaji, your dadima, your grandparents are actually the people who will give you the wisdom. They may not be there forever, but if you spend time with them, you will get all the values forever till you become a grandparent. Okay? So two things, study Indian scriptures, if possible, under a guru, a mentor, who can give this knowledge in a simplified format. And the second is spend time with the elders of your family. Believe me, you will become a great corporate leader. Satya Nadella, as all of you know, Microsoft. Right? So he was once asked, how did you become the CEO? He said, there is two things. One is professionalism. I'm a professional who became a CEO. But the second is I got my values from my family, from my grandparents. Now that's important. So wherever you are, you may be in different parts of the world also. Practice these two things. Read a scripture every day. Biographies of great leaders. And second is, you know, be in touch with your elders. They will give the wisdom. That's how you become a great corporate leader from an Indian perspective. That was really insightful. I'm sure that our audience got to learn a lot from that. Uh, coming to the next question. In the video you presented, it is mentioned that in order to become a good king, one needs to first conquer one's senses. Can you elaborate on how conquering helps as we all feel that rage is an essential quality of a warrior? Yeah, I'll give one simple practice for the day. Okay. And please practice this for one month and you'll see how it becomes very easy for you in the long run. In the first one month, it's very difficult. And the formula is, you know, sit down for meditation for 20 minutes every day. You know, a lot of people have this meditation as... A very big fad happening. Believe me, it's not easy to meditate. Sit down with your closed eyes in a comfortable position for 20 minutes a day. Put on your timer in your mobile. Your body will resist. Your mind will resist. And you feel like you want to speak out to somebody. But believe me, first day it's like going to gym. It's a mental gym. Okay, your body will pain and you will say, I don't want to go. 
doesn't matter try it again second time third time it is said that you know the muscles that pain when you go to gym or when you start exercising the only solution is to exercise again and again not running away from it so that's why i'm not telling you meditate for one day meditate for one whole month the first week it will look difficult slowly slowly what will happen you will get the quality of sitting down calmly at one place slowly increase from 20 to 30 minutes and then maybe one day and you know lot of leaders have this concept called as you know maun maun means being quiet so remember one thing knowledge speaks wisdom listens knowledge speaks wisdom. see i am a knowledgeable person i am not a wise person i should be listening to you more so remember one thing the best way to indriya jaya controlling yourself they say is the tongue if you don't speak for 20 minutes you can actually listen for 20 minutes and the second way of controlling your tongue is actually not eating the food that you like but the food which is right okay so the tongue has two qualities one is output and second is input so don't speak for 20 minutes sit down in meditation simple practice but very difficult in the beginning okay and some of you must have heard about vipassana courses vipassana okay it's a it's a meditative uh, practice that many people do my father is a vipassana meditator people go for 10 days vipassana camp also try it out there are lot of meditation techniques in our country but try simple technique of 20 minutes and this is the food of intake believe me you will develop what is called as indriya jaya and you will become a great leader thank you thank you for your valuable addition to that uh, it was very informative so coming to the next question you mentioned that tata has different values rather than the companies who treat employees as stats and numbers rather than people how did the founders and leaders at tata include these values down to every employee of their organization very beautiful question very beautiful question in fact i don't know i've been seeing this on whatsapp since the a uh, morning that today is international students day or international youth day i'm not sure but definitely today is international lefty day left handers day are you aware of it so a lot of people in fact 7 to 10% of human race is left handies lefties bolte hai na so today is international left handers day but somebody told me today is international youth day also not sure but i want to tell you indian youth day india's youth day is 12th of january not today so we have a national youth day also it's actually the birthday of swami vivekananda and i want to tell you that you know he died at the age of 39 but he was a global indian you remember the famous speech of my dear sisters and brothers of america now here is something i want to tell you about tata group because fortunately i worked with the tata group at the leadership level so they say our whole company is built on the vision of swami vivekananda okay now here is a story when a lot of people may not be aware of it that when vivekananda went to america for the parliament of religions remember the famous speech my dear sisters and brothers of america in the same ship when he left bombay uh, the founder of tata group jamshed ji tata also traveled with him there was no airplane during those days and they had lot of discussions how to make india developed country it is swami vivekananda who gave the dimension or the idea of making india a world power it's all documented okay if you want to see the proof you can go to the tata website and read the books you will get lot of ideas but what happened is that he said india cannot be left behind and the way to india's progress is scientific development so that's why actually the first company of tata uh, when they started it is all about industrial era and they started an institution like we have bits pilani now it's called uh, tata institute of science today it's called indian institute of science in bangalore and jamshed ji tata actually called up during those days vivekananda and told him why don't you join he said no i'm busy that time he was forming the ramkrishna mission now coming back to your question how do tata get these values very simple remember the tata founders they were parsis who migrated and they set up the base in india 150 years ago but they believed in values in fact the parsi community is 
a highly patriotic community. You can see them. Field Marshal Manik Shaw. In fact, he was the one who split, you know, Bangladesh into a different country. Then it was East Pakistan and West Pakistan. So Parsi community have one value system. I don't know whether you know about it. Their temple is called as fire temple. Okay. And they have their own philosophies. Wherever they go, they will contribute. And they have a formula, a philosophy called a giving more than what we take. Giving more than what we take. So the Tata group has always contributed to the, you know, country more than what they took from the country. So these are values. And after 150 years, it is the most respected company in India and the world also. So it's very simple that have values beyond your generation. Have values beyond your generation. That is the Tata group story. Please study and apply it to your life. Thank you so much for that answer, sir. Uh, moving on to the next question. Um, so, sir, you had mentioned that uh, be ambitious, do not become greedy. Given the fast-paced world and in the race to gain numbers, how does one realize this difference? I want you to watch a movie called as Wall Street. I hope all of you watched it, right? So, in that, there are two versions. One is, I think, produced in 1980s. And one very recently. In fact, there is a very famous dialogue in that movie. It says, greed is good. So, you know, it is greed, human greed that takes the human race forward. And there is a mentor in that particular film. I don't know if you've seen the film. An old man. He says, greed is not good. Because greed can give you progress. But you'll fall down after a point of time. So those people who are only looking at, you know, making money, 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 it's like, you know, desires that never end. So I want to be the richest man in India. I want to be the richest man in Asia. I want to be the richest man in the world. But then the next step is that I want to be the richest man forever, even after I die. So companies get into this whole thing. That's why please study American philosophers who spoke about values. And one great author, trained the corporate world in America and in India was Stephen Covey. I don't know if you heard about a very famous book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's a very famous book. I must read for every one of you who are wanting to get into the corporate world or business world. In fact, he wrote a book, another very famous book. That's my favorite book. It's called Principle-Centered Leadership. Principle-centered leadership. Imagine, he learned the principles of leadership from Mahatma Gandhi in India. He was a great fan of India. An American who taught Indian values in the American corporate world. We require more such people. Anyway, coming back to the point, here we have to understand that, you know, ambition is good. You have to have ambition. But if greed is your way to ambition, then it can be destructive. And remember one thing, ambition should be for everyone, not for yourself. A greedy person only thinks about himself. Mahatma Gandhi said it very nicely. There is enough for every man's need, but not for one man's greed. So be ambitious, but not greedy. That's what Tata Group is all about. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. The movie, as you mentioned, Wall Street. Uh, I've heard a lot about that movie and I'm definitely going to watch it. Uh, even the book, like the book is recommended. Uh, okay, moving on to the next question. So you quoted that uh, one should stand up for oneself fearlessly. Sir, how is this practically possible in today's world as one, one stands up for themselves, they risk failures, their job or stable lives. How to stand apart and take these risks? So very simple. When you are having a problem, go to a mentor. See, you know, in life, there'll be always challenges. But if you have a mentor, you'll be able to handle both failure and success. You know, the problem is that we in India take failures very negatively. You failed in your class, you failed in your school, you failed in your business. And our parents' generation will tell, Bola tha na. So, you know, it's unfortunately a social problem. In many countries, Failures are not taken negatively. They are actually, there is a concept in management called as fasten your failures. Okay, have you heard about this concept? Fasten your failure. 
So if you are going to fail after three years, you better fail today, so you can save those three years. And believe me, you should replace the word failure with learnings. Remember, all of us, including me, when we first started walking, we failed. We fell down, isn't it? Second time we tried again, we fell down. But the mother and the father or the grandparents, they said, "Koi baat nahi, beta, wapis utho." You know. So today we can not only walk, we can run, we can fly. Only because we did not take that as a failure, we took that as a learning. So if you are having a mentor like your mother, saying that, "Beta, stand up properly, balance yourself first." So failure or success, don't worry about it. My question is different. Do you have a mentor in your journey? Because when you fall down, there will be somebody who will tell you, "Don't worry, failure is just one step ahead, one step behind success." So they are like twin twins, you know. They exist with each other. So if you have failed, that means good. In fact, there is one very famous uh, uh, quote I had read once. It said, "One day, one person went to a very successful person, and he said, 'Asked him, you became successful overnight,' and the person laughed." Yes, I became successful overnight, but the night was too long. Our problem is we only look at the good part, the success. But every successful person has had me hundreds of failures. So don't worry about failures. Ask your mentor how to succeed again, and you will succeed. Thank you so much, sir, for that inspiring answer. So as we come to the end of this session. I would like to thank you for sharing such valuable information to our audience in such an auspicious event of our institute. I strongly believe that everyone watching this live or the recording are impressed by your ideas. And personally, I feel very fortunate to host you as the first session of the Bharat Dialogue. On behalf of everyone at Bits Embryo, I would like to thank you, sir, for taking the time to have this extremely insightful conversation with us. And all our students have really gained the valuable insight of the corporate life. We're looking forward to another lecture with you on our campus soon. Mm -hmm.